Hey there, everybody. Welcome. This is going to be a special presentation. I have a good friend joining me today. We're going to be sharing a lot of content here on the blog, on the podcast. We're going to be going over a ton of great stuff. And I'm not sure if you know of my, my friend or not. He's actually super uh, in the trenches doing deals, uh, making business happen. And I wanted to get him on here because you know, frankly, he's doing a lot with multifamily, and I had a chance to interview him, and, you know, luckily, we were able to to get our schedules in line with each other, and I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Michael Blank, and Michael's an entrepreneur, uh, you know, through and through, okay? His experience ranges from, you know, a software startup and restaurants to single-family houses and apartment buildings, uh, Michael specializes in raising money. Uh, he's raised money for about 30 house flips, uh, two pizza restaurants, and an apartment building. So he knows a thing or two about raising money. And I asked him what he thinks the best real estate investment strategy is. And since he's done so many different kinds, he'll be able to really just offer a unique perspective. And, you know, he's the real deal. Okay, that's why I asked him on here. You guys know through the trainings that I've done in the past, I only have people that are doing business today because there's no point of having somebody on that may have done something 10 years ago. Uh, that doesn't work anymore. That's not helpful for you. So I wanted to get him on here and you know ha have him really share what he's doing right now. So pay close attention. Uh, so, so Michael, uh, I, I know that you're with us right now. Why don't you start telling everyone a, a little bit about yourself before we get into the discussion? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And you know, I, I have done all kinds of entrepreneurial things, but to be honest, I, it's taken it took me a long time to figure that out. I was uh, in the mid 30s until I, I, you know, a bulb went off in my head, going, "Hey, I, I, I can't be in the corporate world. I have to be out by myself." So, you know, I started off like most other people, which is, you know, I was taught go get good grades, get a good job, and right. that's what I was t taught to do, frankly. I mean, I, I didn't know any better. I wasn't around any kind of entrepreneurs. So, you know, I did, uh, I did go through a software startup, and I got the sense that I was kind of a startup guy just in that, in that process. I just really, really energized me, in the whole startup process, and I was in the right place in the right time. The software company, I was one of the early uh, employees there, and we just... You know, within three years, we had $200 million in re revenue, wow. and, and we went public. So it was this big, wow, cool kind of experience, right. and I put a bunch of money in my pocket, which was great. And then in 2004, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I was like, God, I am such an idiot, right? <laughs> you, know, you, you know, it's not how much money you have in the bank, it's how much passive income do you have, because if I stop working tomorrow, I will stop earning money, and this hit me like a brick. And before, I was, I, my plan was to be the head of a software company because that's what I knew and I moved around inside the company to try to experience marketing and, and sales even and I just totally kind of went, you know what, I think I need to do something totally different. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I did what two things that Kiyosaki said, I need a cash flow business and real estate. They don't have to necessarily be the same so I said, aha, on the cash flow side I'll get into pizza restaurants. And I had some. I knew some people that did that, and they hired a guy to run all that stuff. And I would just, you know, invest in these pizza restaurants. My idea was, uh, you know, to plow my entire net worth into these restaurants. I figured I had enough for maybe three or so. Yeah. And then it would. My plan was it would self fund it, and then we would be able to open one a year. So I had a twenty unit plan. That was my. That was my big thing. It wasn't really real estate. It was that was the plan. Right? That was my like retirement plan. You know, it did not pan out that way. Okay. And gotcha. We'll get to that later. But that was my plan. On the on the house on the real estate side, I signed up with a local mentor and started flipping houses, and that was eye opening because on two house flips, I made enough. I, I made as much money as I did on my salary for that entire year, and I was like, "Wow, that's an example of working smarter, not necessarily harder." So right. that was interesting as well. And then uh, the the recession, and then I also wanted to get into commercial real estate back in two thousand seven. So I took a boot camp and spent a lot of time uh, marketing in Texas at the time. And probably looked at 125 deals before I find one and was about to put one under contract. It was an 82 unit. It was awesome. But at the time, we were getting so busy on the restaurants uh, front that I put that on hold and uh, decided to uh, focus on the restaurants. So okay. then the recession hit. I had to sell a couple of restaurants. We were up to six at that point. And, uh, and luckily, I wasn't holding any real estate. So I only got dinged on the restaurant side, thankfully. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, 
uh, and um, and then in 2009, uh, I when things quieted down a little bit, I decided to get back into real estate, and uh, that's when I started uh, flipping houses. At that point, though, Jason, I didn't have any money left. I deployed everything in these restaurants. That was my my big, and I kind of bet big on these things. So the only choice I had was to raise money, and I raised money for these house flips. We're buying two months, and um, so that's what we're doing, and it was a it was a kind of a big business, right? We flipped about thirty houses in two and a half years' time, and it was only made possible by raising money, and it really yeah. made this light bulb go off. I'm like, wow, my ability to scale this business is only limited by my ability to find the deals and raise the money. It's not limited by my own resources, and that was a real aha moment for me. And uh, in 2011, we got into I got into an apartment building that was again raised uh, with five investors. Private placement memorandum, everything you know, uh, and, and I also then bought another two restaurants in that time as well, also with with in, investors. Okay. And then in 2014, I decided to kind of share my experiences with other people, where I started blogging, and people were very interested in how to put deals together and, and, and a, a commercial real estate specifically. And so I've been kind of on a, on a mission to help people raise money and do apartment buildings specifically, even though all real estate is great, but there's unique advantages over apartment buildings that I didn't have on the single family house. So we can talk about that a little later. But that's yeah. kind of my story in a nutshell. No, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. What did you the the pizza chain uh, restaurants were those uh, franchises or were those like something you guys came up with? It was a franchise, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool, man. That's awesome. So yeah, we all have we we definitely all have our unique stories of how we we got into to real estate. And I know as we continue to go on here with uh, this particular training, this call, um, we're going to dive a little bit deeper and you guys will get a good feel for, you know, a little bit more about Michael and, and his story and his background. So I appreciate you sharing that. My question that I have for you, and this is kind of a question that I, I tend to ask uh, everybody, uh, especially people that have been doing the business for a little bit. If you had to pick between wholesaling like flipping houses, like rehabbing them. So wholesaling, uh, your your fix and flip properties, your landlording, uh, commercial real estate uh, deals, or or something else. Well, what would you pick, and and why? Yeah, so it's not a straightforward answer uh, because it depends on on your particular situation. So instead of saying, "Hey, you should do this or you should do that." Uh, maybe I'll point out some pros and cons, and, and then yeah. you, know, you can decide. Because I've done both, right? I've done both. Um, uh, here's what I like about single-family houses. Number one, it's it's more affordable, right? It's, yep. You don't need as much money. You can buy you know, good cash-flowing property for under $100,000 in many parts of the country. Some you can't. It's just more affordable, right? People get it. Number two, the cash flow normally is pretty good. Yeah. Not everywhere, but but typically for a house, if you can cash flow a few hundred dollars every month, you know, it, it's it's out there, right? Uh, and they're easier to find because there's more of them. Finding a house, you know, if you want to sit out and you want to uh, uh, find a rental, you can probably find something in you know three four months if you really you know tried. Yeah. So that's what I like about single family houses. What I don't like as much about it, it's a very hands on and active activity. Now it depends a little bit on what you do. Certainly, if you're doing wholesaling, I mean, if you're not if you're not there beating the bushes, you're not wholesaling deals. Flipping houses, same thing. If you're not there looking for deals, uh, fixing them or selling them, you're not making money, right? So. The, those two are not very passive at all. The land learning one, on the other hand, though, is a little more passive. So it's, I like that part of it as well. Um, the single family houses are much more dependent on the market right. uh, itself, right? Yeah. So they're all based on comps. So it, it, no one really looks at the income of a single family house and says, oh, that one's worth more or less. It's really like, what does a house next door sell for? And so you're very dependent on the market. And commercial real estate, as we'll talk about in a second, less so. You're not so dependent on that. Uh, and single family houses are not as scalable. So I have guys coming to me saying, "Hey, I'm done with single family houses." I'm like, "Well, what's wrong?" I'm like, "I am burnt out." Number one, and number two, I can't grow my business uh, beyond where I am right now. So it, you know, if I have certain goals in mind, like retirement in three to five years, and you do the math, you have to buy a lot of single family houses to generate the passive income you need uh, to quit your job. Yeah, absolutely. So. Now, but here's here's kind of what I like about uh, apartment buildings as a as a contrast, right? So, number one, it's a more passive type of investment, kind of like landlording. Yeah. And, and what, what what the difference with single family houses is a lot of guys will or gals will uh, try to manage the property themselves. But with apartment buildings, 
the property a professional property manager is built into the business model. I mean, it's almost unusual not to hire a property manager for an apartment building. So I like that, which makes it much more passive. Number two, it's much more scalable, right? If I want to add uh, 10 units to my portfolio, I can do it with one apartment building deal versus having to do 10 single family house deals. I mean, consider the work. It's 10 times more work to get 10 houses in a single apartment building deal. Now, third thing is the financing is actually cheaper and better for apartment building deals. Actually, the bigger you go because you can get non-recourse financing. This is financing that you don't have to personally guarantee, which is really nice. On single family houses, you have to personally guarantee all of those things. And number four is the, the wealth creation potential is much greater, right? You have more control over the, over the, over the value of the, of the property. Uh, you're, you're, you know, a, a small increase in rental income, for example, has a huge impact, not just on the cash flow, but really on the valuation of the, of the building. And because you're not as dependent on the local market, right? it's not comp right. it's all based on income. So I take the same box, the same building, uh, and it's priced one way, a multiple of income, let's say times 10, right? And it's worth something, let's say a million dollars. But if I add, if I make that box generate $10,000 more a year, either by raising rents or decreasing expenses or whatever, $10,000 or more a year, I'm now adding value, about $100,000 $100, of value to that building, which I control. So it doesn't really matter what the guy next door is doing. That same building, in fact, the 12 unit I have, uh, I have another 12 unit right next to me, and they're identical. And that yep. building could be worth more or less than mine based on the income that box is producing. So in other words, I have much greater control over the value of the real estate, which I like. I don't, I don't want to be at the whim of the market. If the market's going up, thumbs up. But if it's not, that's a, that's a, that's a problem. So that's the reasons I like the, uh, uh, the apartment building stuff. The downside is that you need more money, right? You need more money. Right and uh, and number two, the deals are harder to find. There's not there's less of them, right? There's there's less deals, and they're a little bit harder to find. So in other words, it's it's more work, right? It's more it's and on the one hand, it's more work, but when you find a deal, all of a sudden you're much much farther ahead than you would if you pursued a single family house. So as someone from my perspective, having done both, and also a lot of people that are now in apartment building investing, having come to that perspective that single family houses are a lot of work very active and I can't scale it in perpetuity, uh, we, we are all coming to the conclusion that apartment buildings are kind of the way to go. But again, that is something that you got to figure out for yourself. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. And would you say, like, are, are there any special skills that, that folks need for this type of investing that, you know, they don't need when investing in single family houses? Like, what what advice uh, would you have for somebody that you know is just starting out, like with commercial properties? Yeah, I think I think you know if someone wants to get started with apartment buildings, they really need to focus on developing three skills. One is you know kind of learn the lingo. In other words, don't sound like a newbie. Right. And a lot of people get frustrated very early on when they say they're very enthusiastic and they start calling up brokers, and the first thing the broker says is, "Hey, where's your proof of funds?" They're like. Why did I get that question? You know, thirty seconds into the conversation. Well, it's probably because of the way you came across speaking to the other person. You're not using the right words, so you need to educate yourself a little bit about at least using the right uh, language and some of the basic financial concepts like cap rate, cash and cash return. These aren't complicated things, but the more you know and the better first impression you make, the easier it will become. Yep. So that's kind of the first one. The second one is there's, there's two other skills that we need. One is to learn how to analyze deals quickly. So that you can make more offers. Like with all real estate, it's a numbers game, right? The more you, the more you can, uh, and and it's the same thing here. The only problem is it's a little more difficult to analyze a, a part of building deal than a flip, for example, right? So uh, that's a, this, and this is a skill that you can learn. It's actually, it's it's there's always in everything in life a little bit of an art involved, but this is really a science, guys. It's it's a very deterministic approach. And, and the, the faster you can get, the better. I mean, when I first started this thing in 2007, it took me like four hours to analyze a deal. It was insane. Oh, you wow. Know? And now I've got it down to a 10-minute technique, right? Uh, 10 minutes where you make your first offer. And if you can learn this technique, uh, which you can make a lot more offers. So that's, that's key. Okay. And, uh, wow. Yeah, that, that's amazing, especially you can analyze a deal in, in 10 minutes. That's that's great, you know, especially from an apartment standpoint or any type of a commercial building to analyze a deal within that short period of time. That that's great. And you know, that's that's amazing. I'm glad you shared that with us. Maybe you could tell us more about that later. Um, well, what what's the third skill? 
Well, the third skill, as I alluded to, is raising money. The, the number one objection I hear from people is, Michael, this is great. I actually believe that apartment buildings are the way to go. I can retire or achieve financial freedom. I get it. But I don't have enough money. I don't have any money. I don't have enough money. I don't have credit. And to them, it's an, it's an insurmountable hurdle. And they dismiss the entire strategy. And then they go, I'll, I'll stick with wholesaling or single-family house. When, in fact, this is an example of trying to expand your mind to go, hey, you know what? There's actually another way. And yeah. That way is, is raising money. Mm -hmm. And like I said, once you acquire the skill of raising money, or you, it even becomes a form, once you realize what's possible, it opens up your entire world. And it did that for me, and it's do doing that for, for a lot of other people as well, is really learn to raise money. And it's not, it's not an impossible task. It's simply, it's, again, it's a very deterministic process that you go through, and you're building relationships with people, and you tell them how excited you are. And there's a process for getting, getting to commit to you Financially, and you do this long before you put your deal under under contract, right? Because the chicken egg problem is, hey, um, I now got a deal under contract, but now I don't have the time to raise the money. Well, that's right. true, you don't. And um, now I don't have a deal under contract, and I don't have anything to go with my investors with. Also true. So there's a there's a there's a there's a way to address that in such a way where you get financial commitments from people long before you actually get a deal under contract. And when you do that, you can make offers much more. Uh, with what's more confidence, right? It, it changes changes the game. It absolutely does. Uh, when you have that that financial backing, either it be your own cash or you've raised some private money or you went to a bank and they're going to go ahead and approve you to, to get that deal, it just, going into it, you just feel so much more confident. So I can absolutely attest to that. I agree with you 100% on that. And, you know, this is great stuff, uh, Michael. I, I appreciate you uh, sharing all this info with, you know, myself and my subscribers. Uh, this is just great. Now, you know, I'm, I'm really, in all honesty, I'm dying to find out more uh, about, you know, some of the stuff that you do. And I know, you know, we couldn't uh, put it all on this particular uh, training call, uh, this video that we're creating for people. So, one of the things that I want to let you guys know is uh, Michael and I are going to be doing a live webinar. And if you would like to join us, um, this is something that, you know, we're, we're not going to do like a gazillion times. Uh, we're, we're going to do one live webinar and we're going to just go all out. We're going to just really just give you the exact blueprint for what Michael's doing. So if you would like to register, um, there is going to be... Um, a button above right here or below that you can register yourself for the upcoming uh, training class that we're going to be doing. It's going to be a live webinar. We're going to have very limited seating. So make sure you act fast because uh, this is the type of stuff that I preach. Um, because, Michael, one of the things that you mentioned early on is, you know, if you left that software company, yeah, you would have the, the capital in your bank. But if you left, you wouldn't be having any income coming in. And most investors, I don't care if you're brand new, seasoned, veteran, in the business for 20 plus years, if you leave for two to four weeks, does your business continue to profit? Does it continue to pump out cash flow? If it doesn't, then this is a must attend for you because the longevity of your business is just as long as how many, how many hours you're willing to put forth in an everyday basis. So having deals like this, which Michael is going to be going over, how to raise that capital, how to find the right deals, how to do the 10 minute analysis. You know, these are things that you need to know. Okay. And getting these types of deals, under your belt and start building up a nice portfolio. Just imagine what an extra five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollars a month would do after all expenses are paid. You're making five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month off of one or two apartment buildings. Imagine what that would do for you. Imagine the confidence that would give in focusing on other parts within your business. So again, make sure you click above. Okay, my finger right there <laughs> or below and go ahead and schedule um, yourself for the webinar. Uh, again, seats will more than likely go fast. Uh, 
with what everything that Michael's going to be going over, I see that we're going to more than likely sell out just because of the, the actionable items that will be given away on this uh, particular training class. So make sure you do that. Uh, Michael, is there anything else that you wanted to share? Well, I'm thrilled to be able to uh, teach some of these things. We're going to go into the 10-minute analysis and how to raise money and how to find deals uh, in the webinar. So I, I would really look forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, I, I appreciate that. Michael Michael, and I were able to sync up with each other and uh, put some, some time together to do this uh, live training call. So make sure you're there. Uh, we'll be answering uh, tons of questions. It's going to be a very interactive setting on this training class. So it's going to be not like some of the training classes that you've been on before. Uh, we're going to be giving away, like I said, a lot of actionable uh, steps that you can take and start implementing within your business right away. So come prepared. Uh, make sure you arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. Uh, more than likely, the, the 200 spots that we do have assigned for this particular training class uh, will sell out. But other than that, Michael, any, any parting words uh, that you want to share with folks that are, that are watching this? Yeah, Jason, you were so right. Uh, you said earlier about cash flow. You know, it doesn't really matter how old you are, uh, 40, 30, 20, 45 years old. Cash flow is the ultimate goal, and that's really why we're all in real estate. And I just do think apartment buildings is one of the best ways to achieve that. And I'm really looking forward to teaching you some of these, these techniques and secrets just to kind of dispel some of the myths and get rid of some of the ejections and, and really allow you to take a real hard look at apartment buildings. So I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks so much.